Morning folks, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. What I thought I'd do this morning is give you a little bit of a video about trapping that just involves a couple tips and tricks, especially when you're talking about canine sets. I just got back from the Fur Takers of America Trappers College. I took three of my instructors with me to that college and we had a very good time, learned an awful lot. There were things that I learned last year that I actually had forgotten that I learned again this year that reinforced some of the things that are more important that you forget over time. And I learned a couple neat tips and tricks that I want to share with you guys today. And the first one is, the first thing I want to share with you is I want you to understand that what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about setting for canine in particular. But any animal that you're setting a trap for, you need to set that trap where that animal is going to travel. Travel routes are your best locations for sets, even if they're travel routes along the water for water type sets. And most of your critters like canines and things like that, your fox, your coyote, they tend to travel on well-worn paths or roadways, dirt paths and things like that because all animals will take the path of least resistance. So if I have a really long dirt pathway right here that goes for a few miles, I may set three or four canine sets strategically along that path, but I'm going to set them right on the path. I'm not going to go off to the side 20 or 30 yards to the wood line or over to a water area that's over here to my right because those animals are going to travel this path. They may go over to the water area and come back. There's a creek that goes across right here. They may go down that creek and they may hunt in there and then come back, but their main travel route is going to be on this path. So I want my trap as close to this path as I can get it. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to decide where I want to put that trap on the path. And that's determined by the wind because I want the wind to blow across that trap and carry the scent of my lure or my bait to that animal as he's coming down the path. Now most of the winds are coming into my face at this point, so I'd want to put my back to the trail like this, and I'd want to put my set here so that my backing, if I'm going to have backing, is here. The wind's blowing across that backing and taking my scent down the trail for that animal. Now, do I want to take this side of the trail or that side of the trail? Well, that really depends on a lot of things. Inside corners of trails are always going to be the best. Animals are lazy just like people. They cut corners just like people do, and they're going to take that shortest route around a bend. This is a little bit of a bend right here, but it's pretty straight. I'm still going to take the inside of this bend because it's closer to the water area. It's closer to the creek. It's closer to a little bit of a crossing with a pipe over here. And it, again, it's the inside bend. So I'm going to set my trap right here, and this is going to be a mock set. I could trap coyotes right now. They're open all year in Ohio, but the fur's not prime, so I would just be wasting that coyote because I probably wouldn't use the fur for anything anyway. But we're going to make a mock set today, and we'll pull the set before we leave. But I want to show you a couple tricks and a couple different sets while we're out here. Stay with me. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to dig ourselves a trap bed and... The first set that I'm going to use here is called a step-down set. And this is one of Ron Legge's favorite set for fox, but he's caught a lot of coyotes in this set as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to dig ourselves an area that's about the size of our trap, wide, just like this. Then we're going to go up and we're going to dig a slot in front of that. And that slot is going to be about four to six inches up from where our trap bed is going to be. Then we'll continue to dig our trap bed out. If you're in hard dirt, this might take you a little bit of time. Now, don't think for a minute that you're going to fool these animals into thinking that there was no human here. It's not going to happen. Those animals are going to pick up human scent no matter what you do. The object of the game is to overcome the fact that they are cautious with curiosity. So we want to give them something that they can't resist coming over here and sniffing out. And then they get into our trap. And what we want to do is we want to dig this trap bed at a little bit of an angle. And you can see I'm going at a little bit of an angle here where I've got a steep grade going down into the trap bed. Now I don't want to get too wide out here on the back side with this. I just want enough room for my trap to sit in there well. And I want it to be pretty even 
with my slot. There's a lot of coal in this ground right here, so it's a little tricky. And I'll dig that slot as deep as I've got my trap bed right off the bat. Like that. Now, what I'm using here is an MB550 trap, Minnesota brand 550. These traps are pretty expensive, but they come right out of the box ready to use. You don't have to mess with pan tension and all those types of things. You do need to dye them and wax them if you want to, but I know a lot of guys that use them right out of the box. So we're going to set this trap real quick. And this trap comes with what's called a night latching system. So that once you've set the pan on that trap, you can actually pull that pan down until it clicks. And then you know that it's ready to go. Now, like I said, you've got to have this bed wide enough for this trap to go in here. So we'll have to dig it just a little bit wider on this side. We're digging into some coal here. A little hard ground. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sift a little bit of dirt down in here right off the bat. Get some of these clumps out of here. And just try to sift a little bit of dirt for this trap to sit on down inside here. Now, I'm not wearing gloves. A lot of trappers wear gloves. It's not one of those things where it's going to be that much of a killing matter, in my opinion. Because, like I said, you're never going to kill the human odor. It's going to be here. It's going to dissipate over time, but it's going to be here. Now, what I would do is I would stake this trap down with this double staking device. Right down the bottom of this trap, I'd drive two 18 to 24 inch long rebar stakes right into this double stake holder. And you want two stakes in here, crossways. You don't want this trap to walk off. These traps are about 20, 25 bucks a piece. So once we've got that pounded in, like I said, this is just a simulation. So I'm not going to pound that all the way in. I'll cover that with a little bit more dirt to give myself a solid place to bed my trap. Just like this. And I want that trap to be in there. My slot's not quite wide enough yet. I need to go just a little bit wider. These bigger traps, you're kind of at the mercy of that a little bit. And I want to really kind of push this dog and pan. You can see this dog over on this side. You want that pretty much right up against your slot that you dug, like that. Now I would take a pan cover and I would cover this over. If I didn't have a pan cover, I might put a leaf on here. And all that's gonna do is keep dirt from getting underneath my pan as I'm filling in my set. Then I'll take a little bit of dirt just go right over top of that leaf just to kind of hold everything in place and look at what I got. I want to make sure that that jaw is bedded nice and solid right there. Just like that. So the trap's not moving. And I want it pretty level with this ground, but I want it at an angle going down. And now I'm just going to cover this trap up a little bit more. And I got a lot of chunky dirt here. And not a whole lot of fine stuff. So it may take me a few times of messing with this to get enough dirt to cover my trap. There we go. That's pretty well covered right there. Now, what I want to do at that point is I really want this trap. I want kind of a dish right here. And I want the front end of that filled in pretty good for the moment up here where I dug that slot. And I found a couple tricks to digging this trap bed when I was at the college. What you really want is you kind of want this dished out a little bit right here. But you don't want that jaw exposed. So you got to be real careful about what you do. And my problem really is that I'm running out of fine dirt. And I can get that squared away here in a minute. Now you don't want anything interfering with these jaws when they open. 
So you got to be really careful about that. But again, you don't want this bed too wide because that animal is going to approach it from here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right into the front of this trap and I'm going to punch a hole. Okay, so I'm going to come right here, right here to the edge and I'm going to put my hole punch in there. And I'm going to punch a hole in there at about a 45 degree angle, about eight inches deep. And if I just turn this thing, it'll pull that plug out and I'll have a perfect hole. That's what I like about these dirt hole punches. They give you that perfect hole every time. And again, up sweep these on the side so that you've got kind of a step down in there where you've got level ground here and everything out here is level. And when the animal enters your trap bed, he naturally wants to put his foot right in that stepping point. And that stepping point should be where your pan's at. Now, if I'm gonna back this trap at all, I'm just gonna take some of this junk that was heavy, stick it on the outside for a minute. And again, I don't ever want my backing to be in front of my jaw line, where my jaws and my trap are at out here. I don't want anything interfering with that closing up. So I'll just kind of bring this in a little bit, just like this, close. And that just kind of forces him, if he really wants to get his nose in that hole, as long as I don't go beyond this, I'm okay. If he really wants to get his nose in that hole now, he's got to come around the front side to stick his nose in that hole. And that's exactly what I really want. I'm not too worried about the width here because for him to get in here, he's got to put his paws here or here or here. So he's going to step on that. And that gives me a step down set. Okay, so there's my finished trap bed and everything is just nice and smooth right here. Everything's pretty level with the trail until he gets up here and then he's got to step down and commit his weight to that pan which will trip it off and catch him deep on the front paw. And that's exactly what I want. It's a foothold type trap. These Minnesota brand traps are very, very good on the animal. They got good, thick, heavy cast jaws on them with a little bit of offset. So when they grab that animal's leg, it's exactly that. It's a foot holding type trap. It doesn't really cut them up or anything like that. Like some of the harder steel type jaws do that are very narrow. It's a really, really good trap. I'll give you a better look at that in a few minutes. So we've got our set. You can see, if I put this straight across ground level, there's a dip under right here. And that's what I want. I want about an inch or so down lower. So when the animal comes in, now you can see by how wide this dirt hole punch is. If a deer were to step on this, the trap can't close tight enough on the sides that that deer can't just jerk his leg right out of that and walk off. But if a coyote gets in there, he's going to get hung in there. And there's an offset in there to keep from pinching straight down totally on his leg and cutting off all the circulation or breaking the bone. It's got rounded edges on it. It's got cast steel jaws. So if you are thinking about the animal's welfare when you're trapping or you're doing things where you're trapping coyotes, but you might get non-targets like raccoons and things like that in your trap that you have to release and let go, this is a good trap to use. I want to show you guys something real quick today. You know, a lot of times when I'm out on the line, if I'm out on the trap line, wherever the case may be, or I'm out scouting for my trap line, I don't want to start fires in places where I think I might want to set a trap or along my trap line, even because it just creates curiosity. Animals like burnt wood, burnt smells. So generally what I'll do is I'll take things with me, like a regular alcohol type burning stove that I can use to heat up some hot chocolate or whatever the case may be. And this Esbit stove that we're carrying on our website right now is a really good little alcohol stove that really, really burns nice and hot. You can light it with a ferro rod or you can light it with a lighter. And remember, this stuff burns pretty clear, so it's kind of hard to see it sometimes when it's burning. But I can feel that heat. Just hold your hand a few inches above it and you'll be able to feel that heat. And we've come out with a new product that's on the market now. And this was another collaborative product that we did with canteenshop.com that basically is the same style stove system pack stove that is on the canteen set except this one fits on the bottom of your 
Pathfinder cup. It's got the same grill top on it, the same raised knobs to get your stuff up off the fire, and it works perfect with this alcohol stove. Now, it works good with sticks and things, too, but it works real good with this alcohol stove. If I just want to heat up a quick glass of water to make myself some hot chocolate, I've got that available to me. Okay, guys, you can see that pack stove works a dandy with that, you know, alcohol burner underneath it <laughs> thing. I know that thing hadn't been on. It's only a half a cup, but it's a 27-ounce cup. And I know it hadn't been on there five minutes. I know it hadn't been on there five minutes. So that thing boils water right now. And it's protected. It protects the flame of that stove all the way around. Keeps you from having to carry any kind of a protectant to make sure that you don't get anything blowing out your flame in high wind and things like that. So it's just perfect for those alcohol stoves and great for wood as well to get your stuff up off the fire and get it right where that heat actually is in your fire, two to three centimeters above the base. You know, I'll tell you what, guys, for just <clears throat> tramping around, you know, for the day or whatever the case may be, this makes a great little cook set combination. You got that 32-ounce Pathfinder water bottle. Put that clean canteen flat cap on there. That gives you a little bit more room in a storage pocket or in a, a pouch that you carry this stuff in, whatever the case may be. And it's a good heavy-duty cap. I like that metal D-ring on there. Um, that design works out really well. Pathfinder 27-ounce cup fits right on there. And that pack stove just fits perfect right underneath it so that's a great design again collaborative design between the pathfinder school and canteenshop.com rob simpson great idea on that pack stove that you set up for the canteen works just as good for this cup stack this right on top of here right in your pocket or your pouch i'd use my bushcraft pack and put it right in the top and it works perfect okay i want to show you another little trick a lot of people will use just regular sheep's wool like this that you can buy by the bag and that's what they'll put their scent or their lure in and they'll stuff that down inside the hole and it works really really well for holding your lure sheep's wool is a very multifunctional item that you can carry in your kit it has lanolin in it so you can use it to wipe down your metal tools things like that and it'll give a little bit of an oil coating to them it's also very fire retardant so it makes great wadding for your flint lock or your black powder firearm because it won't come out the other end in a big wad of fire like some cotton patches and things like that will if you're worried about forest fires and things like that so it's a very multifunctional item now one thing that you can do what happens with this is i'm going to tell you what happens first is you stuff this down the hole push it down there with a the stick an animal trips your trap and he sits there and digs around he tries to get out and messes about but it's a big trap circle out here and when you go to do a reset which you always want to do a reset on an area you caught an animal because that's going to be one of your better sets because it's already sent it up with the animal. If he drags this out and buries it under the dirt somewhere and you don't find it and another animal comes up to investigate your set, he might try digging for this instead of going for what's in the hole. What you can do to prevent that or to help yourself with that is just take a used 12-gauge shotgun shell. A lot of guys used to use the plastic film canisters that you could get with 35 millimeter film but those are getting very hard to get shotgun shells are very very plentiful yes it's going to smell a little bit like gunpowder in there but like i said you're not going to fool this animal into thinking that you weren't here anyway he knows you've been here no matter how careful you are what you're trying to do is you're trying to overpower his sense of security or his sense of danger by overpowering his sense of smell and curiosity or food with something he has to get to and he can't stand it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take some of this, you're going to stuff it down inside this shotgun shell like this and just stuff that down in there with a stick or whatever the case may be and pick up any stick off the ground and ram it down in there and then go about halfway, put your lure or your bait or whatever that is on top of that then maybe you take a little bit of a cap over, like you would if you were building a shotgun shell, cap it over a little bit, just like that, and drop it down the hole. And shove that down in the bottom of the hole with a stick. That hole really not a, has a rocket drop down in it somewhere, something that's not really deep enough. Like I said, you want that hole about eight inches deep. So you'd want that shotgun shell to disappear in there. You want him to have to go in there and try to get that. You don't want him to be able to just reach in there with one toenail and pull it out of there. He may not mess around your trap bed long enough to get hung. So you want it good and down in there. That's not quite deep enough. It's only about that much of the hole sticking up above the shotgun shell. I'd rather have about that much. So that being said, that's just an easy way to put baits and lures in your hole. And then if he digs things up, you're going to find this laying around. Or you can dig this back up 
without having a bunch of dirt and mud and stuff like that all over your scent or your lure canister. You're going to have this ready to go for the next set or the reset. Okay, guys. Well, I'm Dave Canberra at the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me out here for this video today. Real quick look at the step-down set that was taught to me by Ron Leggett at the Fur Takers of America Trappers College last week. Really good canine type set. Guy catches 400 fox a year on a set just like that. Again, we looked at the Pathfinder bottle stove. That's been coming for a long time. I've had that prototype model that I used here in this video for quite some time, but I've had a lot of people asking me when it was going to come because people have seen it in past videos. It is now on our website. It came in while I was at the Fur Takers of America College, so I wanted to sneak that into a video today just to give you guys a fresh look at it and tell you that we do have it on our site for sale at this particular time. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, all my instructors, sponsors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.